Hello, my scientists. Welcome to Flora Funga Podcast for episode 127. Can you believe how many episodes we got going on? This week, we are talking to Erin the Forest. She is mushroom ceramic artist, so we'll be showing off some of her art, some of her ceramics from mushrooms. She caught my eye at Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival last year. She will actually be at Olympic Peninsula Festival again this year. So I'm super excited to re-meet her. She does some really amazing ceramic art, so I can't wait to show you and tell you the process of all of that. She sent me a little bit of her updated schedule. Imagine Gathering is where she will be at from September 6th to the 8th. Okagon Barter Fair will be October 11th through the 13th, and then Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival again this year, October 18th through the 20th. I also kind of wanted to talk about my first few episodes that I released had some really fun segment in them, and I kind of strayed away from that when I got into my interview formatting. So let's bring back juicy news, shall we? This is in Science Daily. It is an article called Pilot Study Uses Recycled Glass to Grow Plants for Salsa Ingredients. Like, oh, what does that mean? Absolutely. So tortilla chips and fresh salsa are tasty. (laughs) but they could even be more appealing if you grew the ingredients yourself. Now, researchers support that some salsa ingredients, cilantro, bell peppers, and jalapenos can be sustainably cultivated in recycled glass. So this research study was saying that it actually grows really well in more than 50% recycled glass fragments. So they actually had three or multiple different sizes that was for like percolation and kind of like more of holding the plant into place. So I'm not sure if they really are using the nutrients from the glass itself, but the study found that substituting soil in a planter with recycled glass fragments speeds up plant development and reduces unwanted fungal growth. So that's just a fun little study. I'm going to bring back Juicy News because there's so many plants and so many fungi studies that are coming out on a daily basis. So just kind of wanted to give you a little nerdiness. Another thing I want to bring back is book recommendations. We probably have heard of this book, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Little spoiler alert, the podcast is called The Science of Fiction Podcast. So Marty actually talks about different books, little different sci-fi books, and he's been looking for a mycologist, so lucky me. I'm going to be rereading this book, Entangled Life, and kind of giving my two cents in on it. So I'm very excited. Just got this book. This is a big, big, big recommendation. If you have not heard about this book, are you under a rock? Secondly, get it. I, I honestly bought it for really cheap online. You could rent it from your library. I tried to do it from my local library, but they have very little selection. So instead of waiting for it to show up from to the library, I just ordered my own. So I recommend this book, even at Tallyride Mushroom Festival if you were there. Somebody for the Mushroom Parade dressed up as this book itself. So... I'm excited to give it a read again, and that is my book recommendation. Next and final before we get into this week's episode is I wanted to shout out different mycological uh, accounts. So if you don't know NAMA, North American Mycological Association, they actually cover a lot of different fungi topics, a lot of forays. They actually highlight a lot of different mushroom accounts. And selfishly, I'm going to make a little plug myself because they've reached out to me to do a little week-long takeover for my birthday coming up. So September 16th through the 22nd will be my takeover with NAMA. So give them a follow If you type into Instagram, N-A-M-A, 
or North American myco. Promoting, pursuing, and advancing the science of mycology. Our content is our community, so share your photos and tag us to be featured. So yeah, give that account a follow. They cover so many different things, different events around the U.S., you know, North America, Michael, get it? A lot of different pictures. Alan Rockefeller was on here. Desert Alchemist was on here. So many, so many good people. Right now, the takeover is from Fungalust. Those are my new little snippets, if you will. So hopefully you like them. This is all about community building. I do this podcast to educate y'all, to give a, like free content out there. So please hit that like button, please subscribe here, please follow me on Spotify, YouTube. I think I only need eight more subscribers on my YouTube channel. I am listened to in 130 different countries. So I only need 80 more countries to get into everyone. So let's think of a fun way that we can get into all of the countries all over the world. If you have a really fun a competitive game-like idea to get into all of the countries. I am all ears. You can hit me up at florafungapodcast.com. All my social media handles are florafungapodcast as well as email is flora and fungapodcast at gmail.com. Don't ask me why I have that as my email. I should have changed it in the beginning, but here we are, so we're committed. All right, if you learned anything throughout this episode, please, please, please share and write a review. It really helps my podcast kind of get out there. That's what I'm thriving for. So please help me with my goals. Thank you, my scientists. Let's dig into some of these juicy, nerdy topics. During like the delicate process when they're like still breakable. I was like, yeah. What is like the percentage that you lose a few? Um... I'm looking at my lost pile right now. (laughs) (laughs) We don't talk about it. (laughs) Sorry. Love you. Sorry. Didn't make it. (laughs) Hello, Erin. Thank you for being on Flora Funga podcast today. We were just kind of discussing right now that I met you at OP Fungi Fest. So that was an amazing mushroom festival in Washington that I was invited to go out to. And I saw your cute little setup, your little store that you had. And I did get some um, videos and like B-roll for the documentary. So I will be posting some of that and I can send you some of that too. But I was very upset that I couldn't come back around and do an improper little um, interview with you for the documentary. So I reached out to you and I was like, hey, would you still want to have a spot on the podcast? Just have your own like shining day um, on the podcast. So thank you for being here for that. What if I told you scientists discovered a hundred new species in the deep ocean? Why did crocodiles survive extinction? Megalodon. How did it go extinct? Hey, it's me, Boris Galante, wildlife biologist. You might know me from Joe Rogan's podcast or my various TV shows like Extinct or Alive and Shark Week. Join me and my friends as we dive into the wild world of animal anomalies and everything wildlife. Don't miss out. Click here to uncover these mind-blowing animal mysteries. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Like, this is my first podcast, so it's super Yay. exciting. Go a little <laughs> <bit there. laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so thank you, Aaron, for being on. Uh, give the listeners, I guess, like a little introduction maybe about you and how you even got into funga and funga art. Yeah, um, yeah, I make ceramics that are inspired by mushrooms and kind of the taxonomy of mushrooms. Early on, like what got me into like flora mm-hmm. and then eventually fungo is that I like moved into <laughs> a place that had a garden. Okay. In my like early twenties. And I was like, whoa, like you can garden and like grow stuff. And oh my God. And then like compost. <laughs> compost. <laughs> my <clothes. laughs> <It's> cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up doing a training in Eugene and um kind of just kind of totally migrating to the Pacific Northwest. Okay. And discovered mushrooms and I was just like 
what are these things? These are cool. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I like really got into like identifying like, okay, what are the, the identifying factors of all the mushrooms? How? Yeah. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love new poster. <laughs> yeah. Those are great. So yeah, I got really into that. And at the same time, I moved to a place that had a pottery studio down the uh, street. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, Oh, that'd be fun. Like I haven't had kind of a creative outlet lately and I'd love to do that and like meet other creative people. And so I went and did it and it was just like a very natural thing. I was just like, Oh my God, this is, this is what I've been looking for. Like this is feels so good. And, and then I like, cause I was also at the same time getting really into like the identifying part mm-hmm. I made like as a, as a kind of way to, like learn some of the identifying factors and um and also just like appreciation I just wanted mushrooms all over my house (laughs) yes I I made some mushroom sculptures and like everybody at the studio was just like oh my god these are so cool like can you make me some and I started like oh making some for everybody at the studio and that was a lot of fun and then like I put some in the window that mm-hmm. like the selling window and so those were selling and then I did Etsy and wow and then it just took off from there wow so the people were demanding uh your art really yeah fell into place yeah no that's that's actually how I feel like I got into mushrooms too is like uh, I went to school for plant biology loved plants absolutely love everything about it how they work and then I was like whoa wait mushrooms plants connected and then like it just like all made sense like it was just like an easy transition to it and yeah so now I'm kind of like this both situation of flora and fungi um but I love educating so I did a podcast on it (laughs) that's fantastic. And like, they're so connected too. And it's just like everybody that loves mushrooms loves plants and yes. plants love mushrooms. It's just like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you kind of get one Avenue and then you kind of convince the other side to like join the other side. And then you just kind of all like each other. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So, so some of your stuff like behind you, it's like chanterelles, you got some morel stuff, like kind of got you into diversifying. I think a lot of people stick with like the Amanita. What kind of influenced you to do like chanterelles and other interesting mushrooms? Definitely foraging chanterelles a lot. So I was like, really like, oh my God, chanterelles are amazing. And, Mm -hmm. um, and then also, like, I, I saw so many people doing Amanitas, and I was like, Amanitas, Amanitas are amazing. Yeah. But, like, also, like, there's so many other mushrooms that, like, want some loving, too. And it's just, <laughs> like, I, like, and, and actually, like, chanterelles is my, like, favorite form oh. to create with, because it has such just, like, a natural kind of flowy, organic right. form. Right. Right. Yeah, like, I'm seeing that one behind you, and it's all, like, this guy yes exactly that one. Oh, it's just so pretty with the the gills like that yeah yes you can yeah, like I almost try- smell the apricots <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes exactly awesome yeah so I really liked your setup you had a really beautiful stand at OP Fungi Fest so I was just like I have to I have to like interview you and you have like some other cool things like what inspired you to do like ashtrays and like uh what is that like a tea teacup tea kettle or plates or yeah a DNA uh, what here's the ashtray okay cool yeah it's oh. a lot of fun um Oh God, I can't even remember what the inspiration was for the ashtray was, but well, yeah, I, I think I wanted to do like little stumps and like, I wanted to start incorporating the conks and I was like, yes. how can I get the conks on there without it just being like a weird translation? I was like, they need to be on wood somehow. So yeah. I was like, well, ditch like an ashtray. And then I figured out that like the, a cigarette or a joint could like fit right in the chanterelle. I was oh. like, <gasps> It's perfect. People come to you with specific demands of things, or do you just kind of make something and then they 
buy it from you? Do you do like? It's mostly me making something. Uh, I definitely have had a few people be like, I had this one lady at the radical mycology convergence. Okay. And she had these like three mugs that she was just like, <sighs> so could not decide. And I was oh, like, no. I can make you something. Like, and she's like, yes, I would love that. <laughs> okay, good. This like amazing combination of, of a few things. And it was super, she was so happy. And I mm. loved that. Um, and I would love to offer more of that, but mostly it's, it's, I create things mm-hmm. and I have ADD, especially creatively. And mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just like, Oh, look at this. Yeah. Oh, do this. Yeah. So, like multiple yeah. projects started and then you're like, do I finish them? <laughs> <laughs> Ceramics kind of makes you finish them <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Like, okay. okay. Yeah. I don't really know much about it. I'd love to hear kind of like your process of, you know, from clay or what, I don't even know what material really ceramics is. So if you want to (laughs) educate. Dive into that for sure. Um, It is clay. I work on the wheel. So I like throw, since this is right in front of me, I'll I'll throw it as this kind of just little dish. Okay. And and, um, I take other bits of clay and kind of stick them on there and 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 then carve and sculpt and oh, kind okay. of form. ceramics is really particular. It has to dry mm-hmm. evenly and kind of slowly, depending on the on the thickness of the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I have plastic bags all over my studio. <laughs> things <laughs> dry mm-hmm. evenly. Okay, um, I always have to like monitor things. It's mm. just like if I start a project, I have to like be there for the next like five days or something and depending on the project to like okay is it cracking okay I can mend that a little bit okay yeah it's a lot of babysitting I didn't really think about it it is a lot of babysitting (laughs) it is especially more in like kind of the sculptural world um throwing throwing just like simple bowls is a little bit easier for sure but sculptures definitely okay baby um, gotcha. yeah. and then like they get fired they go into the kiln mm-hmm. and get solidified vitrified is the word Vitri- um, yeah and then they I take them back out and then paint on the glazes and send them back in for a kiln wow okay yeah, yeah I didn't even think about I guess you kind of have to mold and sculpt everything while it's like fresh and wet right in the beginning yes Gotcha. Gotcha. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Once it dries, you really can't change much. Mm, okay. How long do you think like a typical, like the, the um, dish right there, how long from like start to finish would that kind of take you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it's such a hard question. <laughs> right. Because I do, well, pottery in general is, it's easiest to do in batches. So got it. Maybe I do like 15 of these and then like 20, 30 mugs or something at the same time. Okay. So it's hard to individually narrow it down to one piece. That makes sense. Yeah. Be efficient with it. Yeah. And then there's like all the drying time as well. That baby, it just, (laughs) it's finicky. (laughs) (laughs) So a long time. In a way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've i definitely pumped out a batch in two weeks. Okay. It's kind of, kind of a, a general kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I guess do people want something more specific than others? Like, do you have like a top seller or one of your favorites? It all depends. Cool. It is, it is like I've... I've tried to like figure that out before. Okay. And early on, I was, and I, I, I'm coming back to this, but early on, I was kind of thinking like, okay, maybe it's like with the seasons. So like morels are springtime, morels sell more in the spring and then chanterelles more <laughs> in the fall. Mm-hmm. And so, but like there was one season that it was off or something. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like everybody bought 
morels in okay the fall. I was like, oh, interesting. Uh huh. It's it's a hard thing to predict. Yeah. Um, and then just like definitely kind of knowing um, where you're going, like kind of the general location and like if it's kind of more of a hippie festival I might do more ashtrays and <laughs> yeah that's a good point that's a great point you gotta feel feel the audience and the festival or the event that you're doing yeah. okay and where are some of these events I I'd love to send people your way because I don't think you do any real online sales or- yeah not moment online sales Mm -hmm. um because it's been hard to juggle both and like keep inventory yep which is a great problem to have I love that (laughs) but um and and this year I'm really hoping to get more online Mm -hmm. um but yeah mostly at the moment in recent past um in-person sales so all the event producers are announcing their events they're putting their applications out, they're organizing. Mm. And, and then um, I'm, I think I should start hearing back from a, a couple of application, mostly in the um, Portland to Seattle range is what I'm looking at. Gotcha. So, yeah, there's a couple in Portland, like to be specific, like Crafty Wonderland, um, Oh, Oregon Country Fair. I'm, I applied and hoping to get into that one. Okay. Um, and then like the, I'm actually hoping to do the Renaissance Fairs. Yes, that would be amazing. I love RenFest. That's something that I go to every year. It's around my birthday in Minnesota. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. I love the Ren Fairs. Yes. It, would you uh, say that you have like a dream event that you would want to go to? Like you feel like <laughs> you could uh set up anywhere (laughs) (laughs) um well actually last year I I did a dream event um yeah I did a Telluride Mushroom Festival yes oh my gosh it was it was so wonderful last year good I'm just like meeting all of like the big mushroom people I was like ah right just like fanning over all of these people like so many people go to that one it's like it's crazy yeah. how big it's gotten. All over the world, it's just mm-hmm. like huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mushrooms are trending, and so that's that's really good for you. So I'm glad. Yeah, we're both in the right spot. Response been to your art? Have people? I guess do you get like reviews? Do you like hope that you know you show up at different places? Yeah, that is actually one of my favorites. Like. And, and one of the reasons why I love going to in-person events so mm-hmm. much is to like see people like come into my booth and be like, <gasps> <laughs> me. Oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I actually want to set up like a little camera and be like, it's, it's the, the <laughs> response camera. <laughs> Have them like be like, okay, yeah, you could like post it or whatever, but like. <laughs> that would be really, uh, that would be a great um, content idea. Um, yeah social media it's in there I just need to do it because like I've had some like great ones like actually at the Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival mm-hmm. like I had one really good one <laughs> she just like <laughs> around the corner and just like stopped and it was just like <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> that's awesome that would make yeah that would make me feel like so rewarded and like all of it's worth it oh, it's so man. worth it yeah even if no one buys anything, just to like see their joy and just seeing my my art and my creations, that 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 really hits my heart. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And would you have any advice if people are kind of looking into you know being kind of like a mushroom artist of some sorts? Like, do you have any like first time or advice? Follow your passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and your curiosity. Like curiosity is a great leader and just mm-hmm. like where does it take you and like specifics are really cool too. Like, like I really enjoy like getting different mushrooms in there and like, while they may not sell as well to mm-hmm. like the general public, they're still a lot of fun to create. Also just like find community. 
people kind of doing similar, a similar thing that you can like bounce ideas off of or like work with in some way. Yeah. Some collabs. Some collabs, definitely. Nice. Um, I really found um, Facebook groups to be very helpful. Oh. Yeah. Um, like both like in the ceramic world and the mushroom world. Cause like, I mean, the mushroom world is just like very into identification and I could geek out about that. But then <laughs> like, the, yes. the, the ceramic world was like all about technicality and like, okay, like glazes and sculpting and like little tricks and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. It's actually a good idea. Yeah. I mean, there's a Facebook group for anything nowadays. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's so many Facebook groups. Yes. Like, Is there a mushroom that you want to do eventually? Like, do you have something in mind where you're like, oh, I really want to try that, but I'm kind of nervous about it? <laughs> yeah. Bird's Nest is one that I've been like, kind Ooh. of, my gears have been turning a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um let me see yeah oh yeah i have it i have it right here white egg bird's nest yeah i i did like one little i can't find it but i did um one little just like flat like smaller sculpture Mm -hmm. of bird's nest i was like okay that was like a fun little like try yeah but i'd kind of like to do like little teacups those bird's nests oh my <laughs> gosh yes and like put the little things in there but like <laughs> usable that would be so cute <laughs> yeah love I love that cross-section of like functional art and like how how can I make a mushroom a very beautiful mushroom into like a functional piece of art yeah yeah, that's why I really liked your stuff too. I was like, wow, it's like things that like I would actually use. Um, yeah. so I really like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of that process. Mm-hmm. Do you want to showcase some uh additional things? I want to see that DNA one up close again. Yes, that's a fun one. That one's really cool. Like, what inspired you to do that? Um, this one was just like like yeah mushrooms are part of us like we are mushrooms Mm -hmm. they are uh, um but yeah I I I saw some like um 2d art of this as well oh I see like uh, sketches and drawings Mm -hmm. to this so I was just like that is so cool I love that and like and then like my gears started turning up like how how can I do that out of clay yeah so hard to do out of clay but like I think I can do it I think I can (laughs) you did it it looks so good it's so cool I love it love it it's like simple but like so extreme (laughs) yeah right (laughs) yeah so so extreme (laughs) yeah let people know like where they can I guess find you uh like any social media if people can follow you there um yeah so plug any (laughs) handles where people can uh, chat with you or you know see your future events yeah definitely um I will be announcing and doing everything off of my Instagram which okay. is at Aaron the forest e-r-i-n the forest kind of mm-hmm. like a, a breeze in the trees or that smell of moss definitely check her out I can show you like a few other pieces if yes. you yes I would love to I'd love to see more this is another fun concept oh my gosh oh my right. gosh it's like a skull we got a morel in there chanterelle and it's like how would you explain what that is if people aren't watching it it's like yeah a jug. Just you're sure. just gonna have to watch it you're just gonna have to watch the youtube video <laughs> yeah. um kind of rings that come together and like the, the roots go down yeah. and it's- we're being decomposed and mm-hmm. yeah. it's kind of like a stink horn mushroom in a way how it's kind of like a cage and then it's yeah. like a tree coming out of it with other mushrooms and a skull like how could you be better yeah. <laughs> like all the amazing things. it's all of the main things <laughs> yeah. yeah that one's awesome mm-hmm. like so my like current project that i'm working on okay Ooh, yes current project 
yeah, sneak this peek. Thing. Whoa. My friend does ceremonies, mushroom ceremonies. Okay. And so she does a uh, lemon tech tea. Oh. And so she, she wanted like a really big pot for it. So yeah, yeah I wow. created her with like all of the, all of the mushrooms on it. And, yeah. and is that a little like lion's mane too that's coming out of there? Yeah, that front is going to be lion's mane. Yeah, it's hard to see things without the color. <laughs> no, yeah, it looks really cool. It honestly looked like a cake. Like, yeah. I'm like, you could make a mushroom cake. I would pay for you to make me a mushroom cake. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I would love that cake. Mm -hmm. It. Uh, I just moved last summer. So I. it feels really good to have everything in one place and, like, be organized. My mm -hmm. studio before was like a shed out in the yard. And then like my kiln was in the garage <laughs> storage in another room. It's during like the delicate process when they're like still breakable. I was like, yeah. what is like the percentage that you lose a few? Um, I'm looking at my lost pile right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, love you. Sorry, didn't make it. <laughs> um, it's it's hard to it's hard to tell a handful out of a kiln load don't. Mm -hmm. I feel really good about that. <laughs> I'm so excited that I got to see you in person and then have this as an additional. Yeah, definitely. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. really, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, for being on the podcast today. Yeah, thank you so much. So we all like drinking, right? Or at least drinking a little bit or, you know, you know people that go out and party a little too hard. I'm I'm a culprit of that too. I like to have a couple drinks with my friends, my family, but I always feel like I regret it the next day or, you know, you have some digestion problems, you get hungover, you get really sluggish and you kind of waste the next day. Am I right? So I've been using Z-Biotics probably before I even interviewed them for my podcast. So it's actually a prebiotic drink that you're taking prior to drinking to ease the hangovers. So this is kind of what the package would look like. I like to get the 12 pack because it lasts me a few months. So what it is, it's a prebiotic drink. So you're taking this cute little bottle here and you're just opening it and taking it as a shot. So you're sh taking your shots before your shots. You follow me? In here, it's a genetically modified bacteria that actually is designed to eat up a seed alcohol or the negative aspects to drinking. So that's kind of what the science is, kind of behind the scenes of what Z-Biotics is. So thank you to Zach and the rest of the research team have made this amazing, amazing little beverage that you have prior to drinking. And I usually don't want to waste my full day the next day. I like to go to the gym. I still want to hang out with people. I still want to be able to, you know, do real things the next day. So that's what Z-Biotics has really helped with. It's just something that I can know that I'm getting a better night's sleep. I have better digestion the next morning. Make sure you drink responsibly. This is not something that you can just now you know, get wild with it. But it is it is a little crutch. It is something that could be very helpful to people. Um, you might just notice when you wake up, you just don't feel as exhausted. You don't feel as tired. Uh, you just kind of feel a little bit better than you would if you did not have Z-Biotics. So that's how you'd use it. You just kind of take it before your first drink. My mom likes to sneak mine all the time, so now I put her on to ordering her own because even if I just have two drinks, I still could have negative effects the next day. I have rheumatoid arthritis, so drinking is kind of a no-no for me, mm, but I still like to have fun. I still want to drink a little bit. So this is something that has really, really changed me. Another thing that I love about their uh, company is that they have a really good text program. So if 
your order is coming up and they're about to ship to you, they send out a text prior to when they're going to ship it to you. And it's so, it's so great because they have little uh, prompts where you can modify, you could cancel, you could skip the next order. So it's all done by texting. Give it a try. I really believe in this product. Even if I didn't have, even if I wasn't partnered with them, I would still be using it. That's actually why I hit them up is like, hey, I love your products. I use them every time I drink. Even if I just have one, maybe two drinks, I still like to use it. So have this drink before you have all of your other drinks and you are good to go. If you want to try me out, try out Zbiotics and just, you know, see what it's like. Uh, use the code FLORA10 for 10% off. That is F-L-O-R-A 10 for 10% off. Thank you, Zbiotics. I absolutely love you.